Jesus, Lord, we thank you today. Lord, we thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercy. Lord, we love you on today. I say, Lord, we love you on today. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. For it's by your grace and mercy that we're here today and not consumed. Oh, God, we thank you today. You gave us one more chance. And for that, God, we thank you. We thank you for life, health, and strength. 
Thank you for the use and activities of our limbs. Lord, we thank you today. We give your name the praise. We give your name the glory. We give your name all the honor. For you alone, God, are worthy. You alone, God, are worthy. Lord, we thank you today. You didn't have to do it, but you did. Lord, we're grateful for all your many benefits and your blessings toward us. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. It could have been another way, but Lord, we thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Brought us from a mighty long way. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for our children. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for our family, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Thank you. No good of our own. No good of our own. No good of our own. But it was you, Lord. It was you, Lord. And Lord, we thank you. Lord, we ask that you come here today. Touch, heal, deliver, and set free. In the name of Jesus, save your own on today. Blot out sin, Lord. Blot out transgressions. Touch, heal, and deliver. In the name of Jesus, Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us today. Have your way. Have your way, Lord. We come to lift you up. We come to praise your name. Yes, Lord. You alone are worthy. You alone are worthy. And for that, Lord, we thank you. Look on our leader today. Touch his body, Lord. Touch his body, Lord. Give him strength on the day. In the name of Jesus. Word his mouth on the day. Anoint him afresh, God. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for our leader. We thank you for our pastor. We thank you for our bishop, Lord. Strengthen his heart, God. Encourage his heart, Father. In the name of Jesus. And God, you do these things. We'll be so careful to give your name to praise. I say we'll be so careful to give your name to praise. All the glory and all the honor. It is down in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Psalms 8. Psalms 8 and the fourth verse. What is man? that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him, but thou hast made him a little lower than the angels. Amen. Amen. Lamentations 3 and 22. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new Every morning, great is, great is, thou faith. Come on, can we give God praise right there? Come on, open up your mouth, everybody. Come on, just for a minute, come on, can you give God praise? Come on, can you give him honor, can we give him glory? Hallelujah! Come on, somebody lift up a praise right there. Come on, open up your mouth, Judah. Come on, let's bless him. Come on, he's blessed you to see another day. Yes, Lord. Somebody shout up to heaven and say, yes, Lord. Thank you for blessing me to see another day. Hallelujah. How many came to bless him on today? Did you come to give him glory? Did you come to give him honor? Come on, we came to praise our God. Our God, he is awesome. Look at your neighbor, say neighbor. Our God is awesome. Come on, tell him again with a smile on your face, say neighbor. Our God, he is. He is awesome. 
Come on, can you put your hands together like this? Come on, everybody. Come on, Judah, clap your hands, everybody. Come on. Come on, clap your hands. Come on. Come on, we came to bless them all today. God, we give you glory. We give you honor on today. Come on. Say this, come on. Lord, you are awesome. Say, Lord, you are awesome. Yes, you are. Lord, you are awesome. Lord, you are awesome. Everybody lift your voice and say, come on, Lord, come on. Come on, everybody, clap your hands. Come on, everybody. Come on. Go! 
me just groove for a minute. Everybody, come on. Come on, everybody. If God has been good to you, come on, put your hands together. Come on. on saving my life over and over and over and over again he keeps on saving my life why because there is a goal that we're trying to reach I will push towards the mark of the prize of the high calling which is in Christ Jesus he saves our lives for us to move forward he saves our lives for us to move forward no matter the circumstances, no matter what's around you, no matter what you may be even saying to yourself, he saves us to move us forward. How many are really ready to move forward in God? Come on, how many are really ready to move forward in God? Yes, hallelujah. 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 Oh. of freedom I have found in you you're a healer who makes all things new yeah 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 to declare to you my past is over in you all things are made anew surrender my life to Christ I'm moving moving forward oh, oh, oh. you have risen all power in your hand and you have given me a, a second chance hallelujah hallelujah yeah
what we may tell ourselves. We're moving. We're moving. We're moving. We're moving. We're moving. And we press toward the mark. Forward. Come on. Ready to move forward. Lift up your hands, lift up your heart. Say, let it breathe on me. Let his presence breathe on me. Let the breath of the Lord now breathe on. our hearts and our hands are open unto the Lord lift your hands in his presence can you turn me up just a little as our hearts and our hands are open unto the Lord hallelujah hallelujah I was standing there and I heard the Lord said that your worship is based in the idea of being reflective of who I am and what I have done but your worship also has to be prophetic for it is in your worship that I get in the wind of your worship and I move you forward so I don't care what's going on in your world right now 
your worship indicates that this is not the end of me come on just find somebody to witness to and just say this is not the end of me come on open your mouth and tell them I don't know what you're going through but your worship to the almighty God indicates that you're going forward I shine the old eyes hallelujah I just heard him say for about 30 seconds can you shift your worship this morning to be prophetic to speak to a place and a time that I shall arrive for being confident that he that has begun this good work in me shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ come on open up your mouth and release words language God today I worship you and I allow my worship to become prophetic for I shall arise I shall arise to the place that you've ordained for me I shall be the person that you etched out from the foundation of the world and even though the day may be a little challenging but I worship beyond my tiredness I worship beyond my disappointments I worship beyond my letdown Come on, come on right there. Come on right there. Let's just do it one more time and we're done. But I want you to say it like a company of prophets. I want you to reach down in the depth of your own belly and prophesy this worship. Let it become the arrow that launched you into the place that God has ordained you to be. Oh, and I, come on. This is not the end of me. You may.
pull on a neighbor real quick and say excuse me for getting in your space but I just want to give you the forecast for your life for the rest of your life and it's one word forward ain't no stopping you now backing up ain't in your future Woo! decline is not on the agenda for you losing is not what God's plan God I feel it right there open your mouth and shout forward As you take your seat, just touch two or three folk and shout forward, forward, forward. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I'm onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on high. Yeah, ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on. Unstable land, a higher place that I have found. Lord, plant my feet on high yeah, ground. My heart has no desire to stay. Where doubts arise and fears dismay, though some may dwell where these are bound, my prayer, my aim is high. Yeah, it's an old song. Lord, lift me up and let me stand. By faith on him, but table no higher place that I have found. Lord, plant my feet on high. Yeah. I'm tired, but I feel like praising him. You ought to tell somebody, and he shall make my feet like Hines' feet to stand on my high mountain. You ought to tell a neighbor the devil is a liar because God is about to equip your feet to go a little bit higher. My, 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 my. I'm going to leave it alone. But I feel higher and I feel forward. I feel greater and I feel more. I wish I had some prophets with me that'll put more out in the air. Just shout, I feel more coming. I got about five over here and three over here. That's all I need. I feel more coming. I promise I'm going to leave you alone But just point your finger at somebody and tell them My spiritual appetite Requires More than this 
open your mouth and say maybe you're satisfied but there's something down on the inside of me that's pulling pulling for more somebody and say this ain't enough I appreciate all he's done for me but I'm expanding higher heights deeper depths God bless you don't bother it don't bother it don't bother it be seated I got scripture to back me up I'm moving but it's safe from faith to faith and from glory to glory I appreciate where I am in God right now but I may not have nobody else with me but I came here to get a little bit more because I don't know what the devil going to try to do this week but I want to be armed and dangerous you ought to just tell somebody, I personally want to be a weapon of mass destruction because one can put a thousand to flight and two can put 10,000 to flight. There's about 150, 175 of us here right now. Can you imagine if we all gave them a praise together? How many demons could be sent their way oh my 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 god bless you god bless you Woo. i just want the devil to know as long as there's more in god i'm going for it as long as God got something else to give, I'm going for it. I'm greedy in the spirit. I appreciate all he's done for me. But I want to see him in another way that I've never seen him before. I want him to take me to another realm. I want demons to be intimidated when I open my eyes. And say, uh-oh, he's up again. <laughs> he's getting ready to torment the kingdom of darkness. Lord, I feel God in here today. Yeah. I'm sorry. God bless you. God keep you. It's my prayer. I need about 50 folk in the building that just want a little bit more of him. Just give him a quick praise and we move him. Somebody watching us at home, hit that share button right now in this praise. Let the devil know. I want. Just a little bit more. I need a little more glory, a little more power, a little more glory and a little more power. A little more glory and a little more power. I 
Hand on your neighbor and say, you better grab this. Because you don't know what the devil going to try tomorrow. But I want to let you know you got more glory on you right now. And you got more power on you right now. So whatever coming your way, it ain't going to be able to take you out. Mm. 
God bless you. God keep you. your hands real fast open up your mouth and shout two words shout power and then shout glory God bless you it is by this it is by this that we know our God has favored us he has not allowed our enemies to shout triumph over us not allowed our enemies to shout triumph when I refer to that scripture I want you to always understand it does not mean that the enemy don't come oh yeah the enemy shows up but God does not allow your enemy to say they won because the only time you shout triumph is when you've got the victory. God has not allowed our enemies to be able to shout triumph over us. Tell somebody the sound of triumph only belongs to us. Because the Bible said, thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph. I want to put it out in the air. We never lose. Folk in your area shout, we never lose.
never lose I hear it. I am triumphant. I never lose. 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 One more time. I am triumphant. Everybody, what time? I am triumphant. I never lose. I am triumphant. I never lose. You ought to tell it. I am triumphant. I never lose. I am triumphant. I never lose. One more time. I am. I am triumphant. I never lose. Oh, we got to go. I never, I never lose. One more time. Ready? From the top. What are you? Oh, I am triumphant. I never lose. I am. Y'all please sit down, we got to go. Sit down, God bless you, God keep you. Sit down, we got to go. We gotta go. I drive, I drove here saying, I'm not playing with y'all today. Sit down, I'm leaving. I got a time I'm saying amen and I'm going home. Sit down, I'm tired. People in the back get a miracle. I said, praise God with them and help them get a miracle. Eternally grateful that God has given us another opportunity coming to his house to worship him in the beauty of holiness. 
I have been created for worship. Amen. And I'm grateful to God for seeing your amazing faces once again. If there are any first-time visitors here at Bethlehem, Judah, would you stand right quick that we can make some noise over you? Come on, Bethlehem, Judah, let's make some noise over our guests. Welcome to Bethlehem Judah Christian Fellowship, Church of God in Christ, where we are challenged to change, change the champions. God give us bread and we give him praise. We make no apologies for who we are. We just try to live up to our name. That this is the house of bread and praise. Amen. Place of people that were once defeated, but now has become champions. And because we are triumphant. That's our testimony now. We never lose. Amen. Defeat for a believer is not defeat. Defeat for a believer is just an opportunity for God to do something greater in our lives. So even as we worship, bodies are being healed, prayers are being answered, demonic forces are being beat back, and we thank him. I know this is not the only house he's at, but I am a witness he's here. And because he's here, I plan to take full advantage smile at your neighbor and just say neighbor let's take full advantage of the presence of the Lord I mean I don't want you just to shout I want you to get delivered I want you to get free from strongholds come out of that valley of depression come out of that dark place tell your neighbor we're children of the light Amen. we don't we don't live in darkness we live in the illumination of God's presence could you clap your hands for our virtual audience on today and if you have not done yet virtual audience would you hit that share button and engage with us in this time of worship let us continue to do all those things that are concerning us on this week. We'll be here with you, God's willing, on Tuesday night for Keys to Life. Come on out at 7 p.m. Look forward to sharing with you. And all week, let's just do those things. Check your emails and see those things that are pertinent from rehearsals to meetings, uh, Keys to Life. Yield yourself to the many opportunities that we have here at Bethlehem Judah to disciple you and to sharpen your walk with the Lord. Let me express my profound appreciation to all of you because even if you did not come to Florida, I believe you pray for us. And um, I know you watched where you could. And so I want to appreciate you for your profound support in me being the jurisdictional prelate of southwestern Florida. And I want to say thank you. Many will watch the replay. I forgot to say thank you to the ushers on Friday and the agency. And sometimes those people seem to be forgotten about because they're so integral always moving but I thank God for everybody that did their part and so I want to express 
my profound appreciation. We had about 30 people come down from New Jersey. I want to personally tell you thank you. And as future time will come, I pray more of you will have an opportunity to go and just see. I think what happens is that once you see what I'm doing down there, it makes you a little more comfortable in my absence because you know I'm not just sitting home. I really am down there doing some work. Uh, when you come in the building and see it, where I grew up as a child, it will help you connect the dots and understand that this is surely a God thing. And people ask me, how do I do it? I say, it has nothing to do with me. It is the will of God. And when things are the will of God, then God graces you for those assignments. Not that it's easy. Look at your neighbor and say, it ain't easy. But you get grace for it. You get grace for it. You get grace for it. One of our pastors are on now. He didn't make it. Pastor Norman Baker there in Pensacola. Appreciate you, brother. Looking forward to fellowshipping with you soon. And uh, it's grateful to God. And uh, anytime God gives you a call, he gives you the grace for that call. Grace don't make things easy. It just makes it possible. And so we celebrate the grace of God for this. Let's get our tithe and offering ready. And then we're going to bless the baby and choir is going to sing. And then we're going to share the word of the Lord. Grass will wither and flowers will fade. But the word of our God will stand forever. Those of you that will, I want you to begin to think about, pray about, consider joining us next year at that time. I promise you it will bless your life. Amen. It will bless your life. Tithe is holy unto the Lord. A dime of every dollar belongs to God. It is God that gives us the power to get wealth. Everything I got, God gave it to me. So technically when I give to him, I'm not giving him my money. I'm giving him his money that he gave to me to be a steward over. Tithing is stewardship. And when you become a good steward over what God has already given you, then God can give you some more. I might be at the wrong church because y'all might not need no more money. But do I have anybody just say, like y'all was singing about a little more glory, a little more power. I need some little more money. Y'all want to be real. I, I, I need some more money, sister. My, yeah, I want more money so that I can live comfortable and more money that I can pay my bills. But I want more money that I can also give into greater things. God will, and I'm done, move your sowing, here, pastor, to scattering. And I know the Bible said sow, but that's the principle. But prophetic sowing really is scattering. You go talk to a farmer, and a farmer will tell you, he tills all the soil. He goes and turns all the soil. He don't stand there, Mother E, and just put a seed in the ground. He ain't got time for that. He reaches his hand inside the bag of seeds and he scatters it all over the tilled soil. Why? Because if you want a big harvest, you got to learn how to scatter your seed. 
That means you've got to learn how to be extravagant with your seed. Long as you stint you with your seed, you're going to end up with a stingy harvest. I want to keep teaching you and praying with you and prophesying over you till your giving catch up with you. Come on, let's be prophetic. Put your hand on somebody again and say, I decree and declare that my giving is going to catch up with me. No, that neighbor don't believe it. Tell somebody else, I'm going to be such a giver that soon as I let it out my hand, another part coming right back. I'm getting to the place I'm putting commands on money. Y'all ain't got to believe me. I'm like, Lord, I want, I need this amount of money by Friday. And then I look up. Y'all don't hear me here. Start coming. Y'all don't believe. But you can only do that if you are faithful in your tithing and in your offering. A dime of every dollar belongs to God. Get it in your hand now. The giving apps are all out there. Cash app, Giveify. Look, QR codes may be in front of you on a poster there. Scan that. It's going to be up virtual audience on our platform there for how to give. Credit card, my left, your right, a trustee. Be there waiting on you if you want to give. And the Lord will be faithful. Father, we decree the blessings of the Lord upon your people today. That there be no lack in our lives. That even now that the Spirit of God would bring an element of abundance to us. Cause this tithe and this offering to be holy unto you. And to sanctify that which is left. And we thank you now for this time of giving. For we shall be the blessed ones because we obey. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Before you give, clap your hands. Open your mouth because he loves a cheerful giver. And the liberal soul is made fat. Come on, take that giving and pass it toward the windows. Amen. Chair of our deacon board, Deacon Jackson, is serving with us. Amen. And we have begun to stretch our deacon board out some. And we're now establishing deaconess. And uh, our sister, our sister Tanya, deaconess Tanya is coming also and receiving our seeds today. Amen, somebody. We are grateful to God for Hakamasiya, excuse me, for his goodness and his mercy toward us. Hallelujah. I want to especially give appreciation to Sister Tammy Marshall and Elder LaShawn Robinson. Amazing job with our choir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All of you have really played a part and made things better for us. We are always eternally grateful, and we want to do this now. And I'm learning to kind of handle business before I preach because I never know where the Lord going to have me swinging. And sometimes I think our guests understand and they're so kind but um, we have been given the opportunity by the grace of God and I've said this to you before and you may not agree with me after this the choir saying we'll be back to share a brief word but I don't believe God calls a pastor to pastor within the four walls of his church or her church. Jeremiah 3.15, I give you pastors 
according to my heart that will feed you with knowledge and instruction. But the pastoral role is to shepherd, under shepherd the community. I ain't going to get nobody. And if a pastor can't visit somebody in the hospital because it's not their member, I just personally believe they don't have the concept of being a pastor. Amen. All you can do is take care of them that's in your four walls and you really have not mastered what God is calling. And so sometimes we have people that are connected to individuals in our house um, that share my heart for community. Because when we get to heaven, I just believe it's going to be everybody. In my father's house are many mansions. Guess what that word means in the Greek? In my father's house, there's many rooms. See, we always talking about when I get to heaven and get my mansion, I want it on the west side. Heaven is going to be about community. You, you paint that picture like you're going to have a whole house. No. You're going to get you a room. And that's why you got to love everybody because you don't know who your room going to be next to. I ain't got nobody to help me. God going to put us up in his house and all y'all deep culture folk, you're going to be next door to somebody Baptist. And the very person you thought wouldn't be there might be your neighbor. But when you understand this concept, you open your heart to the community. And we're given the opportunity to bless a baby and the father and family will bring that baby unto the Lord today. And while they may not be officially a part of us, they are part of the human race. They are part of the community of faith. I don't hear nobody. And so we always want to love on them. Amen. Would you clap your hands for this amazing? Uh, we can do better than that. Let's welcome to our house. They brought young children to him that he should touch them. And with the disciples rebuked those that brought them. But Jesus saw it and was much displeased and said unto them, Suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of God. Can we pray together? Dear God, we present to you this child from this parent who in gratitude have received him, now give him back to you. Father, even now, we ask that your hand of protection will be upon him today. Preserve him as he grows and when danger threatens him, undergird him and strengthen him in moments of youthful temptation that he may accept you as his personal Savior. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. amen. Today's church, as always, when we have these opportunities, we come to witness the coming of this family to dedicate this child unto the gracious and loving care and keeping of God our Father. God grant us here today that we will all take part even in this moment, to pray for this family and to pray for this child. To the parent and to the family, I ask that as you dedicate your child, that you also dedicate, rededicate yourselves unto Christ. The maintenance of a Christian home where Christ's word will be held in reverence and again that he may accept 
Jesus as his own personal Savior. Because you recognize the spiritual, physical, and moral responsibility of parenthood, and your dependence upon God for strength and wisdom to faithfully discharge the duty of being a parent. I ask you, do you present your child in dedication to God today, seeking divine blessings and guidance for his life? And if so, would you just say, I do? name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, we lift you up before God. You may be blessed and protected. Having heard your desire that this child would be dedicated and earnestly believing, you will strive by example to train this child in love toward God, knowledge of his son, Jesus Christ. We therefore commend Zion to the gracious keeping of God. He will not remember this day, but let him know oil has been placed on his head. Prayers have been offered for him. He has been lifted in the presence of the Lord. He will be blessed, protected, and covered for his entire life. Would you face the congregation. Congregation, would you give this family an amazing hand? Certificate of dedication. Thank you for this opportunity. God bless. Our choir is coming and then we'll be back to share the word of the Lord. Smile at your neighbor and say, Bishop Tide. So he not going to preach long. Tell him, get with him real quick.
somebody and tell them I am safe in the Lord let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight O Lord my strength and my redeemer Father, the entrance of your word brings light. Illuminate us in these few preaching moments. Bring us out of the dark place. Cause us to be the children of light. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen and amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. God bless you, brother and sister Ray. Please know we're praying for you continuing to pray and lift your family up. This afternoon at 4 o'clock, if anybody want to travel with me, it's not a church appointment, but I'll be with our jurisdictional bishop for New Garden State at the House of Prayer Church. I believe today may be his 37th or 38th pastoral anniversary for the House of Prayer. And so we'll be there at 4 o'clock. Uh, sharing the word again. The gospel according to St. Mark chapter number four. It is a very familiar text. 
but if you would allow me to share it one more time. Anybody praying for me? Thank you very much. That day when the evening came and he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side, leaving the crowd behind. Uh, they took him along just as he was in the boat. And there was also other boats with him and a furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that they were nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion, and the disciples woke him up and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up and rebuked the winds and rebuked the waves and said, Peace be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. And he said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, who is this or what manner of man is this? That even the wind and the waves obey Look at verse 35 again with me and verse 37. Let's connect these dots. It says that Jesus said, let's go over to the other side. And then verse 37 says a furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat. Let's preach this. Touch your neighbor and just say, in the pursuit of peace. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. In the pursuit of peace. When the Lord laid that thought on my mind and took me to the scripture, it was very interesting to me the dynamic that he showed me. He said, I asked my disciples or told my disciples to come with me and let us go over to the other side. I put them in a pursuit. And the pursuit of going over to the other side then caused them to be brought into a storm. I clearly heard God as I prepared for worship this morning said to tell my people on this side it is pursuing. On my side it is pushing. Often what we fail to understand that while we are in the pursuit of more of God, it is God that has uniquely arranged difficult things to push us into other realms of him. Bottom line, this pursuit of peace can only be revealed in a storm. I need you to catch this because there is no need for peace if peace is already there. So he said, when you are in pursuit of peace, that means your pursuit oftentimes will push you in a difficult place that he may show you another space. Often we fail to understand that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Go to the next caveat and he delights therein. So the steps that you now walk in the pursuing of God actually will not lead you or land you in a comfortable place. Smile at a neighbor and say, it sounds good. But when you pursue peace, you have to go into confusion. Because the only way peace is going to be peace, there has to be confusion. See, y'all still ain't caught it. We want him to heal, but the only way he can heal, something has to be sick. We want him to provide, but the only way he can provide, something has to be lack. Uh, 
So God said, tell my people, I want them to know everything that they're walking into in this season that is not comfortable for them is a divine setup for them to pursue me in a way that they've never pursued me before. Because once you pursue God in that manner, you're about to see God like you've never seen him before. I'm having my own moment because I got it this morning that everything that I thought was a problem was really just an opportunity for God to show me a side of him I've never met. Talk to your neighbor and say, I don't care how long you've been knowing God. I promise you, you're about to meet him in another way. Ooh, I bless my life. When you understand what the text says, they left the crowd behind. And God said, many of you are not able to experience me in another way because it's too crowded in your life. And the only way that I'm going to reveal myself is got to be you and me and them that's been called. And see, y'all don't want to say amen because it's certain people you don't want to cut loose. But can I make an announcement to you? Everybody has not been called into your future. Every person that you label as a friend has not been called into your future. I ain't going to get no amen on this. You got some family that has not been called into your future. You got some church folk that have not been called. May I argue as I hurry this, maybe your revelation of God has not hit because you got too many folk still hanging around. So I say, what are you saying to me, Lord? He said, go back to the first verse that you read. What does it say? And on the same day. What day? The same day that they saw me work miracles. The same day that they heard me teach. And on the same day, I tested what they heard and what they saw. And they failed because they freaked out over the storm please stay with me the same day I reveal myself to you I'll let you drop in something to test where you paying attention and so I'll let you come to church y'all ain't gonna hear me and receive prophecy shout fall out get happy and on that same day I'll test your word see y'all ain't gonna want to tell the truth how many y'all failed on the same day how many of y'all let something pull you out of character on the same day? How many of y'all had an experience where you knew you and God had a moment in your prayer closet and the same day a storm rose up to test your prayer and you fail? I come to find seven folk to let you know that ain't happening no more. After today, there's going to be a word that's going to drop in your life that's going to give you the understanding that when something hit my life, I'm just being tested what did he do he worked miracles in front of them Matthew 8 23 and 27 he works miracles when you get home read it Matthew 8 23 and 25 he teaches them on the day of the storm and what does he teach them he teach them about the parable of the sower and the soil wait Stay with me. Please stay with me. This is not a parable about the sower and the seed. It's a parable about the sower and the soil. We often make it about the seed. But he says you can have good seed and bad soil. So it don't, oh, oh so I'm losing you. It doesn't matter how 
good your seed is. If you put good seed in bad ground, you still going to come up empty. And so some of y'all are frustrated because you know you've been sowing and you know your seed is good. But can I tell you, you've not put it in the right soil. He says to tell you today that the soil will come to test your word. So he says, we threw word. Stay with me. Because sometimes seed is money. But this time, seed is word. So right now, y'all don't hear me. This is seed being sold into what I hope is good soil. Because if you let what I'm saying drop down into the soil of your spirit, I don't care what the devil do, you're going to yield a good harvest. But before you get home, guess what's going to happen? Birds are going to try to come and eat your seed. You got to start recognizing your storm ain't nothing but a bird that's trying to eat the seed that God put in you. Oh, I ain't going to get no help. And you've got to know how to let your praise be your scarecrow. You got to know how to say, you know what? Once I get a revelation of what God's going to do in my life, I'm just going to praise him. I don't care how many storms try to come and eat my word. You can't have my word. I need somebody to know not just the word you heard now, but the word you've heard all your life. Prophecies that have been spoken over you. Revelations that's been given to you. I dare you give a quick praise and tell the bird you can't have it. Sometimes, I'm coming, that seed, preacher McCovery, falls on rocks. And when it falls on rocks, it springs up. And here's most church folk. You ain't got to like me. We spring up, but we have no roots. And so we have a good time at church, and then we're confused by Monday. Because we had a spring up, but we didn't get no roots down. And God say, in this season of your life, you can't just be reaching up. You got to go down in the depth. You got to know how to get before God and say, settle my spirit. That I'm not so emotional. That I doubt you every time I get bad news. Settle my spirit. That the very people that rub me the wrong way won't have that effect on me anymore. More. I know y'all ain't ready, but I dare you give him a quick prayer and say, settle my spirit. And then there's that good ground that yields Dr. Cook 30, 60, and 100 fold. Now, some people teach this and they say you should get 100 fold. They say 30, 60. Why settle for 30 when you can have 100? Uh, I got a little pushback. Because the 30, 60, 100 is not your option. It's very plain there that some reaped 30, some reached 60. And some reaped a hundred. I knew y'all ain't gonna like this part because y'all been wanting a hundred. You got to learn how to settle for whatever God's ordained for your life and realize if it is your 30, that's all you need. See, y'all missed it because God gonna let you do more with less than what other people are doing with more and here is where the spirit of comparison come in church because you can't praise God for your 30 because you're so intimidated of somebody in their hundred that you don't even realize your 30 is just as good as they 100 Wave at a name and say, whatever the percentage, 
I just want what belongs to me. And if it's 30, I'm going to live good. And if it's 60, I'm going to have the victory. And see, that's why I don't like church folk. Because y'all want to make the 100 be better than the 30. That ain't what he's saying. He's saying, trust me with the word. And whatever you're supposed to get, that's what's going to yield. Find your neighbor and say, don't get in competition with me. Because what I got is what he wanted me to have. Matter of fact, look at your neighbor and say, I celebrate you. Because what you got is what he wanted you to have. So this pursuit of peace. I'm almost there. Bless you, Sister Lake. We love you. This pursuit of peace really then is the strongest building block. Stay with me. In relationship. Because if you can't trust God, you will never be at peace. And I want to tell you, y'all be oh, the devil attacking my praise. He ain't attacking your praise. He's attacking your trust. He wants to give you trust issues with God. He wants to give you a feeling of abandonment. He wants you to have abandonment issues with your father. And you got to know how to say, though he slay me, I still, no, no, no. Tell your neighbor, if you pray for anything, pray that I never develop trust issues with God. Because if I ever get to the place that I don't trust him, he can't be God in my life. If I ever get to the place that I don't trust him then he can't order my steps if I ever get to the place that I don't trust him I won't cooperate with him I say God what am I saying to your people today he say just go tell him trust me so if I walk you in a storm trust me if you lose the job trust me because guess what it is? It ain't nothing but a pursuit of peace. You lost your job? Yeah, I lost my job. What you doing? Pursuing peace. How you pursuing peace? You ain't confused? No, because I trust him. I'm going to eat. Y'all don't hear me here. Matter of fact, while I'm at home, I might gain weight because he going to provide. Now y'all going to sit there and act funny. I need seven folk that have talked back to me that in seasons of your lack, you still had whatever you needed. Y'all gonna sit in and act like your lights went out just cause you didn't get a paycheck. You gonna act like you didn't have nothing to eat just cause you didn't punch a clock. The devil is a liar. I'm old and I've been young. But one thing I've never seen, the righteous forsaken and not his seed. So Jesus, I feel it. I don't want to feel it, but I feel it. When there is a lack of trust, what creates then is suspicion. And so some of us, we are suspicious about God. I'm closing. If it's too good, this is too good to be true. When is the carpet going to be pulled from up under me? Because that lack of trust creates suspicion. Wait, y'all ain't going to like me. And church people has put us on guilt trips. And when things start going bad, oh Lord, I wonder what I did. See, that's the problem. Your crowd is Job friends. 
that when you do bad, they sit around your bed and say, what did you do wrong to deserve this? You got to know how to talk back to people and say, I'm not anything but in the pursuit of my peace. And the reason I'm in this sickness is because he want to heal me. And the reason my family is going through this trauma is because he want to use my family as a model to show what happens when he steps in. Way back your neighbor and say, get rid of Job's friends. Because, see, y'all ain't going to like me. But this deep sanctified church has created in us a spirit of guilt where we serve God out of feeling guilty. Oh, let me do right because I don't want God mad at me. Let me do right. No, I'm just going to do right because it's right to do right. I'm just going to do right because I love. Wait. I'm almost there. Anybody did what was right and wrong came back to you? Anybody loved people and that very person you loved was the one that did the most damage? Anybody ever paid tight and for a season and paying tight, you still was trying to pull stuff together? Wait. So y'all, y'all ain't gonna like me. Your righteousness is as a filthy rag. You can't do right outside of grace. So all this I'm going to do right ain't nothing if it ain't empowered by grace. And that's why we got so many self-righteous people in church because they think they little actions is what holiness is about. Y'all ain't helping me. You don't need the Holy Ghost not to sleep around. You don't need the power of the Holy Ghost to keep you out the wrong bed. You just need to have some good morals. I ain't got nobody to help me preach. You don't need the Holy Ghost not to cheat on your husband. Cheat on your wife. You just need respect for your vow. I know a whole lot of good moral people that's still going to hell. Y'all not got it. Y'all ain't got to like me here. You got it wrong, babies. This thing is about making a decision to make good choices to honor God and say, God, you are in total charge of my life. And whatever you allow to happen to me, I'm riding out this storm because I am in the pursuit of peace. And even though the storms are raging, after a while, you're going to say, peace, be still. So Mark, and I conclude for the third time, shows Jesus, the servant, the sacrifice, who is moving swiftly. Stay with me. He's working miracles, teaching, impacting, drawing crowds. And he is all, y'all still with me? Leading to the cross. Wait, this is what blew my mind, Sister Darlene. He said, tell them, every blind eye I opened, I opened it so I could get to the cross. All the people I fed, I fed them so I could get to the cross. I was not working miracles to become popular. I was working miracles to fulfill prophetic assignment to die. He said, tell them today, even if they don't say amen, every step in your life should be bringing you to the fulfillment of your purpose. And if you're preaching just so somebody can say you're a good preacher, you missed it. If you're singing just because you think you flipped the church when you get a mic in your hand, you missed it. Y'all don't hear me here. Every mother, the way you parent your child, every step ought to be leading that child into their destiny. Because they're not your child, it's God's child that he gave to you to be a steward.
So here it is. He did not come to be served, but to serve, to give his life as a ransom for all. Touch your neighbor and just say, peace. So what's going on? Peace has been broken. Saints, do y'all see what happened yesterday? Hear me as the prophet of God. Our country is on the verge of civil war. And after a while, you won't be able to publicly say you're a Democrat, Republican, or Independent because you will be attacked. There is no peace, y'all don't hear me, in the land. Oh. And God said, I am intentionally allowing this country to flip upside down on its head because I want them to know that the nation that forget God shall be cast in the hell. I ain't got nobody to help me. And so we pray. But Mr. Trump, y'all don't hear me? We're believers. We don't care what our alignment of his behavior or thoughts could be. Lord, cover him. Protect him. Heal his... Y'all don't... Look at your neighbor and say, if you can't pray for folk that you don't agree with, then you need prayer. in America in a place that she will pursue peace and the way he's going to do it he's going to make confusion come so that we can run after peace peace what's peace harmony wholeness completeness prosperity welfare tranquility Put your hand on somebody. Well, no, leave him alone. Put your hand on yourself and say, I am in pursuit of harmony, wholeness, completeness, Woo. prosperity, welfare, tranquility shall be my portion. So here's the story. They get on the boat. Church people love this. Because we're going to shout. Jesus said we're going over. Ooh, I got a word from the Lord. What's the word? I'm going over to the other side. But in the mix of the crossing is a storm. For the fin, y'all, I don't care how accurate your word is. Every prophecy is attached to a problem. And if you're out here shouting about what he's going to do, you better get the loins of your mind together about what you're going to have to go through before it happens. Oh, he going to use me in a whole great way. And half the church going to lie on you before he use you. Oh, I got a ministry. I got a future. And yet you're going to get fired. And they're going to find a lump on the breast. Y'all don't hear me. And your children ain't going to listen to you no more. And you failing to understand all of that is God pushing you on your pursuit. So you want to be used by me? Let me drop you in fire. Oh, they slayed you out and covered you with a sheet. 
Get on up, baby. Get them back their sheet, because it's go through time now. Oh, see, y'all ain't ready for this. Oh, you want to go tell the pastor you've been called to preach? Go have a meeting. Soon as you come out, get down to Galloping Hill. I'm going to flatten all four of them ties, and you ain't got no money to replace it. That's the pursuit. I hope y'all get this. Because while you on this side saying I'm pursuing God, God is behind you saying, oh, you want me? Well, let me push you into something that you're going to think ain't me, but it really is me. Because it ain't till you get in that that I can show you another side of me. Shake a neighbor hand and say, neighbor, I promise you, before this year out, you're going to meet God like you've never met him before. Come on, pull on him and say, don't get scared, don't get scared. You're doing all that hollering. He ain't gave me the spirit of fear. What's the meat of the text? The meat of the text is this. Stay with me. The meat of the text is that he puts them in a boat, gives them instructions, let's go over, but then he orders a storm. I'm closing. I'm closing. Look at somebody and say, stop having an attitude about what God ordered. Wait, let's pursue the other side. I got a problem with this text because I'm following Jesus. Have y'all ever thought about it? Here you got 12 guys walking with Jesus saying, let's go to the other side. Okay, I'm going with you. And little do they know, jokers, I'm going to set y'all up because I'm getting ready to walk you right in a storm. Wait, y'all ain't ready for this. Not only am I going to walk you in a storm, I'm going to sleep. Y'all still ain't caught it. Come follow me. I already ordered a storm. And when the storm hit, I'm going to be asleep. Wait. I'm all God. But in the minute of your crisis, I'm going into humanity. Because I'm God and human at the same time. Y'all ain't caught it. So when you need me, I'm shifting to the other side. Because I want to see what you going to do. I'm about to wrap this up. It's going to bless you if you stay with me five minutes. I'm going to put you in it and then I'm going to be non-responsive. To see if you really got word in you or not. And so all of y'all sitting in here today and watching me live that's got an attitude because God ain't been answering you. I'm here to tell you he's putting you on a pursuit of peace. And you here crying, Lord, when I ain't till you figure out where you at and who you are. Wave at your neighbor and say, neighbor, God's going to put you in it. And then pay you no mind. See, y'all don't want this kind of preaching. Because y'all want to hear the, the ear of the Lord is to the mouth of the righteous. And when you cry, he gonna bring you out. I wish I had some real church folk say, I cried and I stayed in it. I prayed and nothing changed. You know why? Because he put you in a pursuit of peace to make you grow up. And I ain't got to be like today. I'm here to tell you whatever you're in is pursuing you to grow up. And when you come out of it, it's gonna be another level of maturity on you that the devil will never find you there again 
I got to stop. I ain't got no voice or no strength. Shake a neighbor hand and say, neighbor, when this storm ends, I promise you, the devil will never find me in this kind of place again. Two minutes. He goes to sleep, but where did he go to sleep? He went to sleep in the stern, some call the hinder part of the ship, on a pillow. What is it? It's the captain's seat. Bring me my chair. I got to sit down anyway. Help me prove my point. What is it? What is it? What is it? Jesus said, don't worry about what I'm doing. Ooh, it's changed my life this morning. He said, tell him, don't worry about what I'm doing. Worry about where I'm at. Because I'm sitting in the stern. I got my head laying down on the pillow where the captain drives the ship. So I'm asleep, but I'm in the place of control. Wait, y'all didn't get it. I'm non-responsive, but I'm still in charge. Because I'm in the captain's chair. God told me to tell you, don't worry about if I ain't responding. Just know where I'm at. And where I'm at is the place of control. Because I'm sovereign in all things. And what you feel like you ain't got no control of, I do. Master. Carest thou not that we can ready to die? Joker, die. Didn't I say we going over to the other side? Wait, y'all ain't ready for what I'm about to say. Man, die. You been with me and don't know I'm the resurrection? That even if you did die, I'll get you back up? Oh, I feel like standing up right now. God said, y'all run here talking about I ain't going to make it. When you don't even know you serving not the way maker, you serving the way. And you asking me to make a way for you. That's an insult, make a way. Just let me be the way. Why I got to make something that I am? Shift your prayer language. Lord, you ain't got to make no way. Just be the way. Because when you be the way, I'm walking through this. When you be the way, it doesn't matter who don't want me to make it. I would dare you touch somebody around you and say, I promise you, God's about to be the way for you. Here's the meat of the story. Let me wake up and calm these boys down before they have a panic attack. Master, carries thou not that we perish? He wakes up, and what does he do? He rebukes the wind. He tells the wind, please stay with me. I know I'm boring. I'm coming. He tells the wind to stop. Why does he bother the wind first? Because the wind is the cause of the waves. So God says some of y'all are stopping the wrong thing. 
You waking up stopping the waves and the waves ain't the problem. The wind is the problem. So God say in this next season of your life, I don't want you to fight the symptom. I want you to fight the cause. I want you to get to the root of what's going on, even in your own mind. Y'all don't hear me here. I want you to stop having attitudes with people and go within yourself and begin to discover why everybody offends you. Y'all don't hear me. I want you to stop walking around here, pointing your finger, talking about what they did. I want you to get in yourself and find your issues of abandonment and rejection and say the devil is a liar. He that the son sets free is free. Oh, I need somebody in here that's going to declare their own freedom. Look at your neighbor and say, there's nothing you can do in this season of my life that's going to make me miss where God's getting ready to take me. y'all you got to go okay that blew my mind when it showed me he stopped the wind and when he stopped the wind the waves stopped uh huh wait the bible said that the boat was about to be swamped that means y'all still ain't caught it water why do they think they're getting ready to die? Because what's on the outside has now taken over on the inside. Wait, y'all still ain't caught. We wouldn't be caring if the water wasn't filling the boat. But the issue is what's out there is now taking over in here. So when he stopped, God, I feel like a dance, the wind and then the waves stopped. Y'all still ain't ready. That meant all the water in the boat jumped back out. No, y'all go home and look at it. Because one minute I'm saying I'm about to drown. I'm not drowning because I'm in the water. I'm about to drown because the water is over in my place. So God said, when I bring peace, I put everything back where it belongs. Water don't belong in the boat. Water belong in the ocean. So God said, I need you to get ready because when I ship this thing for your life, everything that's out of place is getting ready to get back in place. I need about 50 folk to go in a crazy praise because water is about to get out your boat. Wait, that, that neighbor don't believe it. Tell your neighbor, when God calls divine order to your life, when God calls peace to your life, everything that's out of order, get back in order. That means that sickness leaves your body. That poverty leaves your house. Touch two, three folk in your area and shout one word, order. Touch two, three folk in your area, shout one word, peace. Tell that neighbor, I'm in the pursuit of peace. It, it ain't comfortable, but I'm running after peace in this season. And I realize now that I got to go after peace in the storm. I want y'all to get the wisdom. Because y'all want stuff to be over. That it ain't time for it to be over yet. Because God said, I want you to pursue me in this season I know where I got you you ain't got to keep telling me how bad it is I heard you last month but it ain't time yet but when it's time I'm going to stand up and say peace be still oh when it's time all that water in your boat going to just jump out I need about 50 folk to be prophetic and just take one leap and sit right back down and say it's just going to jump out. Sit down. Sit down. Yeah. 
So when I make you pursue stuff, I put you in it. I push your back until you get in the lion's den. Daniel, you're in pursuit of peace, but your peace is the den. Three he boys, you're in pursuit of peace, but your peace is the fiery furnace. Your peace is the agony that you're going through. Wait, Bishop, peace is there? Yes, peace is there because I can't do what I'm going to do unless you need it. God is need oriented. He can't do nothing if ain't no need there. I can't heal if ain't nobody sick. So I have to hold my hand back. No, I don't make you sick. Sickness wants you anyway. So I've been, the only reason you ain't been sick because I put my hand there. So I just move my hand and say, go ahead and do what you want to do. And think you're going to take them out. And just when the doctor told them they ain't going to make it, then I'll walk in and say, peace. y'all get it? That means for the rest of my life, whatever hit my life, I'm just going to break out in crazy praise and say peace must be coming. Wait. Here's the meat. Here's the meat. And we're going home. Three minutes. We're going home. I had myself on a clock today. Here's the meat. What's the meat? He stops the storm and then rebukes them. And y'all ain't going to like the way I'm going to close this message. But some of y'all need to be rebuked. Some of y'all just need a good telling off. You've been with God too long to be doubting him now. You done seen him move too many times to be sitting here caught up in your emotions. Shame on you. You've been saved 30 years and not talking about, I don't know if this is real. What? You've been going to church all your life. Now all of a sudden, ah, you know, I think, I think they got it wrong. You know, I've been exposing myself to some new teachings and ideas. Where was that idea when you had cancer? Where was that idea when you almost lost your mind? Now all of a sudden you want to switch out on God. And he not fed you when you hungry. You want to act different with God now. And he not kept your mind all this time. The devil is a liar. Before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. He been my bridge over troubled water. He been my doctor and my lawyer. And when my mama and my daddy forsook me, he the one that stood up. No, I ain't changing my mind on him. yourself together this ain't your first rodeo this ain't the first time you had a bad day this ain't the first time you was in a crisis didn't he come through before i am the same god yesterday today and forevermore if i did it then surely i will shake your neighbor by the hand and say neighbor if he did it before, he's going to do it again. Shake that hand and say, get yourself together. You're in the pursuit of peace. Run after it. And let the devil know I'm in trouble. But he's in charge. been wounded but he's in charge pull on 
on your neighbor this is my last minute and say neighbor the mysteries of the kingdom is given to those that's got a teachable heart look at them and say whatever you do keep your heart open keep your heart teachable let God put you there but don't you worry for the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord I ordered I ordered your sickness I ordered I ordered your trouble but I'm God and when when I get ready I'm going to say that's enough wave at your neighbor and say neighbor I promise you if you praise him right quick he'll say that's enough say neighbor if you give him one more glory he'll look at your storm and say that's enough let's pray wait let's pray I don't want you to miss my point I'm sorry I got a little happy why that's it we're praying why did I let you see miracles because I wanted you to be able to handle yourself in your storm why did I do that teaching to you because I wanted you to be able to handle yourself in your storm Man, I just had an anxiety attack because I thought I was going to die. And you turn around fussing at me? Wait, because I showed you enough today that you should have been able to stop the storm. Or y'all ain't ready. You didn't need to wake me up for this. That's why the text say on the same day. What same day? The same day I just worked a miracle. And the same day I put all this teaching in you. Now I'm trying to see what you got. And you scared. Waking me up. When all you had to do was open your own mouth. And say peace be still. Oh I'm going to bless your mind. I'm going to mess you up. God told me to tell y'all today stop waiting on him and do it yourself. If I'm in you, uh, then when you speak, I'm speaking. What you talking about? You waiting on me to show up. I'm inside you right now. Why I got to show up? Open your mouth and let me be God through your mouth. You shall decree a thing and it will be. I need about a hundred folk in here that know God is in your belly. Open your own mouth and shall peace be still. Pull on your neighbor and say, stop your own storm. You decree I ain't dying. I shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. You decree I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed when I go in. We got to go home. Cause I'm real tired now But shake your neighbor hand And say neighbor You stop it You tired of it You stop it You sick of it You stop it You open your mouth and say I'm gonna get the job You open your mouth and say This cancer gonna leave my body You open your mouth and decree Your children bless you. pursuit of peace bow your heads you waiting on Jesus to wake up 
and Jesus waiting on you to speak up. Because Dr. Cook, the human side of him was sleep. But the divinity side of him was woke. And he said, you mean to tell me? This is an epic fail. After all I not poured into these jokers. And when I give them their own storm, they standing here acting like they don't know what to do. That's why he said, you're going to be with me all this time. Let me read it. And they revealed that they didn't know him. Because they've been with him, I guess, all this time. And what do they say? What manner of man is this? You've been walking with me all this time and you still don't know who I am. have us been in church all our lives and don't even know the only way we've been created in his image is that we're talking spirits and that internally once your life is connected with God your words create you sick of it today you stop it. pursue peace you go home and say my marriage is going to get together tired of this drama I speak peace in this marriage go to work tomorrow and say I'm sick of these people bothering me this is my job and the only reason they open is because I need a paycheck they don't even know if they get rid of me the department gonna shut down God only got this thing open so I can have a check I speak peace up in here y'all don't hear me Come on, practice right quick. Open your mouth for the next 30 seconds and begin to decree peace. Grab somebody by the hand. Let's pray. If you are not saved, the greatest peace you will ever have is to know Jesus as your personal Savior. Peace be still. Peace be still. The winds and the waves shall obey. Whoever hand you're holding, squeeze it just gently and shout the word shalom. shalom. Tell them everywhere your peace has been broken. God is about to put it back together. God has you in a place of pursuing peace this day. Sober your minds. Get your spirits together. And whenever the Lord says peace, there'll be peace. Peace, oh, oh. Whenever the Lord says peace, there'll be peace. Peace, oh. Help me say it one time. Whenever, whenever the Lord says peace, there'll be peace. Woo. I promise last time, everybody, whenever the Lord says peace, there'll be peace.
we invoke the spirit of peace no more confusion in your home no more confusion on your job no more confusion in your health no more confusion in your finances even in your mind you're in the pursuit of peace oh, oh, oh. so much is going on in our world but Lord speak peace whenever the Lord lets me when I count to three I want you to begin to pray keep playing and just bring it down when I count to three I want you to be prophetic in your prayer for the next 60 seconds I want you to travail in Zion for the hand that you're holding because the Lord assured me this morning that a spirit of peace will follow us home in every place where confusion has been our portion he says today i put you in the pursuit of peace but the only way i put you in the pursuit of it is to invite you in the storm he said the mouth of god i have invited you in the storm that i may show you where you are and show you who i am i have invited you in this difficult season of your life that you may know that i am the lord your god and that you are mine and that I am in you and so the God stands up in me open your mouth and say God stand up in me today stand up in me and give me courage to call peace Woo. come on get ready to pray you got one minute get ready to pray I need you to grab the horns of the altar because ain't nobody walking out of here under confusion today nobody leaving this life under confusion today I take authority as the prophet of God and I say the spirit of peace shall be our portion come on one two three begin to pray begin to pray begin to pray begin to pray whenever the Lord says peace I need to hear Zion pray there'll be peace let me hear you pray in the Holy Ghost father as I hold my neighbor's hand I pray for them in the name of Jesus May the spirit of peace take over their life today. That they walk not out this door in confusion, in fear, in doubt. But today, peace shall be their portion. Peace. Because whenever the Lord says peace, that's it. Come on. It's on my job. It's in my family. It's in my mind. It's in my body. It's in my marriage. It's in my spirit. Come on, Zion. Cry out, cry out. Oh, my Yatala Baba Shoko. Yatama Diaba no Siki Ababa. That's it, that's it, that's it. That's it. I feel deliverance. Can you feel it at home with us? Don't you feel it at home with us? Twenty more seconds, that's all. I'm on the countdown. Oh, oh, oh. Peace, Norma. Peace, Sharon Lake. Peace, Brother Kawan. Peace, Sister Paula. Peace, Janice. in the room 
the shalom of God be restored the peace of God that passes all understanding shall guard your heart and your mind the peace of God that passes all your neighbor and say God has spoken peace over your life today tell them you are in the pursuit of peace the peace that passes all understanding shall guard your heart God's getting ready to let you rest in it 
tell them God's getting ready to let you rest in it. Keep your hand on them because something is transferring. From life to life, the spirit of peace, wholeness, tranquility. I'm done, but tell them what God is doing for you right now. A bird cannot take it. The sun cannot burn it. The thorns cannot choke it. It shall not fall off of the side of the road. But tell them your peace is rooted in you now. And it shall bring forth the ordained harvest. Now, if you believe what has happened in this room has been uniquely designed for you and that you're going home in a different way than what you walked in this door, now put those hands together and release such a praise of appreciation. That's it to the God of our salvation. Come on, release appreciation to the God of our salvation. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord calls his face to shine upon you and give you peace and give you peace and give you peace. I place the name of the God of Israel upon you and he shall bless you in all that you do. I promise, saints, I'm letting you go. We're dismissed, but take your hands and flip them over where you see the palm of your hand. Look at your hand and say, I speak the spirit of peace to my hand. The work of my hands shall yield the fruit of peace. These hands shall not bring forth confusion. They shall not bring forth failure. But everything I touch after this moment shall be a harvest of peace. And I thank you, God, for the honor of peace being upon my life like never before. As you walk out this door, hug two or three folk as you go. And every person you come across, just say peace. The shalom of God be with you.